glass artist Stacy Neff shares how her response to the medium is inherently a feminine response to her ideas about nature. Glass has an elegance as a material that I just haven't seen in anything else. It's like molten honey. It has qualities of a real-time event, a real-time experience that you don't get in any other medium. It's like gathering molten honey on the end of a honey wand, mm. forming it, and then magically, or as if by magic, it becomes, it hardens. So that the real-time events of moving it, of pulling it, of pushing it, are frozen then in that moment. Mm. It's like if I blow just a bubble, it can be the shape of breath. Mm. And I don't know another medium that would offer that kind of real-time experience. I started with glass because I went into the hot shop and I saw teams of people working together to realize forms. Glass blowing really is a team sport. It takes multiple people on the team, each with a specific job from gaffer to say third man to be able to pull off a piece. The next thing I did with the glass was I wanted to blow bigger forms. So to get the scale that I wanted, I used the gestural pulling of the glass, but I would allow the forms to be very thin. So maybe even just an eighth inch or, or thinner. And then I would case them with fiberglass and epoxy resin and finish them with automotive paint. That allowed me to get the scale that I wanted off the end of the blowpipe so I could maintain the gestural qualities of the blown glass, but have the scale to have a human sort of confrontation or interaction with the piece. Could you talk a little bit about that, the, the gesture you talked a little bit about and these kind of uh, formalist aspects of your art? The gesture for a long time was very autobiographical. It was about my own experience with my own physicality. So about being pregnant or about uh, gestation or about birthing. So a lot of the forms would reference that, not in a directly biographical way, but contextually to look at, look at that formally. Then as I moved on in my life, it became rather a broader biographical context. So I would look at biomythology as a theme. So my own mythology is about botany and biology and how the two might work together, how, mm -hmm. how nature could take a, a left turn or a right turn to come to these different forms. And then I moved on to a geotime. So thinking about time and form as a variable, because a hummingbird's sense of time would be different than a mountain's sense of time. Mm. So geotime looked at earth time. And it was very much about orbits, rotations, planetary pull, what is the factor that makes our orbits what they are? How does it all work together? So I looked at that in uh, creating singular sculptural items to discuss those themes. And I went on making my fiberglass epoxy resin forms and painting them with the automotive paints. They got bigger and bigger. And then I began to get sick from the medium. Mm. So I had, uh, it was like a chemical sensitivity. I had some liver damage. So I stopped working with all the resin and all of the automotive paints and all the toxic materials. And I went back to a concept of sincere, of without wax, without glue, without adhesive. And it's yeah. all heat and gravity and that, that forms the pieces, that make the unions between the pieces, that make the, contour, the very contours of the pieces as the give and take with the gravity of the heat as they meet and merge and, and meld into the forms. Well, you, and you talk about displacement in your work. Can you talk a little bit more about that? You're working with gravity and heat. So the glass is falling always down. That's predictable. And it's always getting more solid as it cools. So there's that real time dance that happens in the making in the glass blowing studio. But then, in my recent pieces, I've been making closed forms. There's no air opening to them at all. Then I load them back into a kiln. I stack them next to each other. Now, as they get hot, the air can't escape like a balloon, not mm -hmm, right. right? The air stays in. So when they fall into each other, they displace 
and make the very form and the connection of the form. Uh -huh. well, one of my favorite sculptures is Bernini's Rape of Persephone, where the fingers are reaching and grabbing, and her flesh is displaced by the rather violent grip mm -hmm. of, of that hand. That displacement is a very formal concept in sculpture, so I'm doing it in a more organic way, but still working with that same formal concept where the forms lean into each other, they have a subtle mm -hmm. displacement. Can you talk a little more, though? You started to go there a little bit about the nature, the connection to your work in nature, and specifically the feminine aspect of that. My most important inspiration has always been the geometry of nature. Because from the macrocosmic to the microcosmic, there, there are echoes in the formal relationships. So responding to that natural geometry is how I've been able to have a, it's, it's my dialogue. It's my artistic dialogue. Now, a lot of it's very feminine because as my biographical self, when I make my work, it's coming from me. And so it's been, it's been a wealth of inspiration, just being a mother, being a, a woman. And that, that shows up in the work, in the concepts of cell division, of birthing, of uh, gestural protection. It's a constant theme throughout my work. I mean this pun, but what is the fire? I mean, you fire glass. What is the fire that fuels you to continue creating? Every time I finish a piece, there's always questions of other things I could have done. It's always a story that I haven't told that keeps me coming back. But there's also the material itself. I'm, I'm in love with it. I love the glass. And with the glass, there's so much we can do and so much that hasn't yet been explored in contemporary art. It keeps me getting out of bed.